It's from Covert Action Magazine. It's a pretty good investigative piece. Uh, fake intellectuals working for think tanks funded by the arms industry are driving support for war after war after war. And as we know, Joe Biden is not the one really running this country. It's really people like Anthony, B Anthony Blinken and uh, the Joint Chiefs of Staff and people like that. And where are they getting their ideas? I mean, yes, some of them may just pop up in their head in the middle of the night. Hey, let's support genocide in Israel. But some of them come from these think tanks because not only do these think tanks spend a lot of time, uh, you know, playing the chess game of geopolitics, how can we destroy other countries? But they also spend a lot of time finding out how to correctly propagandize it, how to, uh, you know, it, it, if they're going, if if the ruling elite in the in the halls of power are going off something that was brought forward by one of these think tanks, they know that they have the endorsement of a certain section of the ruling elite as well. And so there's many reasons that these think tanks are incredibly powerful as they're funded by the arms industry and big banks, et cetera. A few days after October 7th attacks in northern Israel, the Atlantic Council ran an inflammatory article on its website by Jonathan Panikoff, a former deputy national intelligence officer entitled, It Doesn't Matter Whether Iran Planned the Hamas Attack, Tehran Is Still to Blame. Basically, it doesn't matter whether Iran was involved, we should still bomb them. The article went on to support an aggressive military response by the U.S. and Israel that could potentially entail bombing Iran. The Atlantic Council has been particularly hawkish with regards to Russia helping to fuel the proxy war between the U.S. and Russia and Ukraine that has decimated, decimated a generation of Ukrainian Russia youth and left us on the threshold of World War III. There's a book that emphasizes the undue influences of think tank pseudo-intellectuals because of their ubiquitous presence in the mainstream media, as well as academia. They also run these social media platforms in uh, in some ways. Uh, Facebook basically put their gave their fact-checking abilities or, or, or dictates over to the Atlantic Council to decide what information should be allowed on Facebook. I'll give you a hint. I'm not doing so well on Facebook. They don't actually want you to see anything I say. Their job, meaning the think tanks, is to manufacture consent for the goals of their paymasters, weapons manufacturers, and oil companies who profit off of war along with foreign governments courting more U.S. military aid. Think tanks have become a symptom of hyper-capitalism in which all aspects of society have become an appendage to the markets. I'm glad they get capitalism in here because that is the source of it all, right? It's not just to... It's not just to facilitate war and U.S. hegemony, but the reason for U.S. hegemony is mainly money at the end of the day. It's to make sure that the U.S. petrodollar and those who are enriched by it keep their immense wealth and that wealth keeps growing. The think tanks help condition the public to fear foreign threats, which is exactly what uh, Tucker Carlson was doing about China right there, and support wars of aggression under the veneer of providing independent expert analysis. Paul Craig Roberts, the Assistant Secretary of the Treasury uh, for Economic Policy under Reagan, has called the Atlantic Council the marketing arm of the military security complex. Yeah, security. That's what it gives us, right? Putting us on the brink of World War III. It makes us secure. The Atlantic Council's financial report from 2020 reveals that it received over a million dollars from the United Arab Emirates. So even the UAE is helping decide who we should be at war with. It also received major contributions from the British Foreign and Commonwealth Office, Facebook, Goldman Sachs, Rockefeller Foundation, the NED, which of course is a CIA cutout, U.S. State Department, a Saudi oil billionaire who's that's good to hear he's also helping decide our foreign policy ukrainian oligarch victor pinchuk uh, crescent petroleum and burisma the energy company owned by ukrainian oil oligarchs which appointed hunter biden to its board with former cia counterterrorism director kofor black the atlantic council's close ties to the cia were further evident when its former executive vice president damon wilson was appointed ceo of NED, a CIA offshoot that promotes propaganda and supports dissidents in countries that we're trying to flip or bring down. Former CIA Director Woolsey is listed as a lifetime director of the Atlantic Council. 
Former CIA directors Leon Panetta, Robert Gates, and David Petraeus are listed on the board, along with such war criminals as Henry Kissinger and Condoleezza Rice. I can't stress enough, these think tanks that are all the things I just described are setting the policy for U.S. government. It's not the American people. The American people don't at all set the policy. In fact, I just played a clip of the spokesperson for the National Security Council, Kirby, being asked whether the American people get to weigh in on the U.S. support of the genocide in Gaza, and he was just indignant. What did they know? Biden doesn't check what the American people want when he's making decisions, but he damn well checks what the Atlantic Council wants. Tell you that much. I like this part of the article because it does a little bit apply to me. One of the Atlantic Council's fellows, Michael Weiss, spreads his anti-Russia invective as an editor at the popular, and it's also anti-Russia lies. I mean, he, they, they, they publish straight up lies. Anti-Russia invective as editor of the popular online media outlet, The Daily Beast. The Daily Beast has also come after me multiple times. Uh, he helps run a neo-McCarthyite website, Proper Not, which also, Proper Not also went after a lot of the outlets that I've written for, uh, a lot of the outlets you probably respect as uh, the best outlets on the internet. Proper Not had claimed we're all Russian propaganda. Proper Not that promotes the worst kind of fear-mongering imaginable, attacking independent media outlets, including the Ron Paul Institute, for allegedly advancing Russian propaganda. So the editor of the Daily Beast, which they did a whole set, a whole article on me and a few other people and how we were Russian propaganda and how you should make sure. And uh, they, they were trying, I think the main reason is they were trying to get Patreon to shut down all of our Patreon accounts so that we could not earn a living because you want to destroy, when anyone's revealing the crimes of the empire, you want to destroy their, uh, you know, ability to have a career. In 2015, the Atlantic Council helped prepare a proposal for arming the Ukrainian military, sounding familiar, with offensive weaponry like Javelin anti-tank missiles, the same year that it presented its Distinguished Leadership Award to Marilyn Hewson, the CEO of Lockheed Martin at the time, which produces Javelin missiles. So you can see how this is an incredibly incestuous circle jerk of a relationship where the think tanks are funded by the weapons contractors. They're also made up of media people that uh, promote these storylines that then manufacture consent for the, the endless war that the U S perpetrates. So it's all a big cycle and it's all connected and people leave think tanks out of their, their uh, condemnation of this horror show that we create around the world. They often ignore the think tank aspect of it. Last February, Matthew Kronig, the deputy director of the Atlantic Cal Council's Scowcroft Center for Strategy and Security, argued for consideration of the U.S. preemptive use of tactical, quote unquote, nuclear weapons. So Atlantic Council is arguing for, you know, just use little nuclear weapons. The article says this would not only kill thousands of people directly, but likely cause what scientists characterize as a nuclear winter by injecting so much smoke and debris into the air that it would block sunlight and, of course, damage the food sources around the world. The Atlantic Council continues today, along with other think tanks, to whitewash Ukrainian war crimes, corruption, and close ties with the far right and neo-Nazis. Michael McFaul of the Hoover Institute even celebrates Ukrainian President Zelensky's crackdown on opposition politicians and media. Zelensky has banned the opposition party. He's also banned any media uh, person, people that, you know, journalists that don't uh, toe the, the uh, pro-war Ukraine line. In 2019, the RAND Corporation, the think tank of intelligence of the intelligence agencies, issued a report calling for threatening NATO expansion and the arming of Ukraine in order to draw Russia into a conflict that would facilitate its overextension militarily and economically and cause the Russian government to lose domestic and international support. The RAND Corporation did exactly, they, they called for and they put out the studies for exactly what ended up happening. Basically, the ruling elite looked to these think tanks as the 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 uh, game plan for their foreign policy actions. 
And this article, if you want to get more, and then they get into Center for a New American Century, uh, which is another major one and includes Victoria Newland, who was one of the crafters of the proxy war in Ukraine. Anyway, a lot of great detail there. It's at Covert Action Magazine, if you want to read it over there. And I just wanted to bring to you some of the truth about think tanks.